Ladies and gentlemen, my name is The Reckonist. Welcome to Football Manager 2020 and MDT, Maldini Doesn't Tackle, will be my first tactical release of the year. Uh, before we get into that, though, I just want to say a huge thank you to every one of my Patreon supporters. Without your support, I couldn't spend as much time doing this as I actually did. Do. I can't look at my wife in the eye and say, yeah, this is why I'm spending so many hours doing Football Manager. I just want to say thank you very much for your support. I am trying to get 50 supporters on Patreon by the end of 2019. So if you're a fan of anything that I do, the live streams, the guides, uh, the tactical videos just like this, please consider supporting. There is a link down in the description. Please visit the site. Thank you so much for your support again, every single one of you Patreon people. Okay, now this is a, as you can see there, a 4-2-4 system. So this is very aggressive and focused on wing play with two strikers banging in the goals. Um, this is a, it's a reiteration of an older system. In fact, it was the, I had to go back and check this. This was the first system which I developed live on stream back many a while ago. Um, and it was with Newcastle. I remember it very fondly. I can name the entire starting 11 for even from back then. And so this year I went straight back to that. My initial thought was, let's just do, let's just go and attack, you know, who dares wins. That was my first thing. And uh, it seemed to have stumbled across something which is extremely powerful. This is based purely on mobility. So this is very much a pace, stamina, work rate uh, focused system. And it's, it is very effective. I think let's, before we go into some of the details, I'll try and keep this as, as short as possible and as concise as possible. But as you can see, this is season one. This is the 18th of May, 2020. And we are clearly the champions with Bournemouth. We were supposed to finish 15th. Um, I made one signing, which was Jared Bowen, which I didn't even really need to do. Uh, I just did it. And I managed myself for one half of the season till I think it was like January 5th or something like that. And then I went on holiday. I was unbeaten until that date, till January the 5th. Um, and, you know, 30 wins is a lot of wins. 10 points clear over Liverpool um, with, you know, great performances. You will see here that we have a disciplinary issue. I'll talk about that in a minute as well. Um, but let's just go back into the squad. I mentioned this is based on mobility and endurance. I kind of focused on those on the training. I have a custom training schedule I might export if enough people want it. Um, but you know, it is based purely on running very fast with very fast people who can run. There we go. That should be the subtitle. Running very fast with very fast people that can run. Um, this is, um, well, Callum Wilson kind of sums it up. Extremely quick, extremely fit, and works hard. That's basically the template for all of these players. They all have to be extremely fit and have the ability to run. I would think at a Premier League level, you kind of 14 would be the minimum um of those particular stats so acceleration pace stamina natural fitness because you're gonna do it week in week out if you can that's just like a secondary one though and um, work rate being extremely high everyone on the, this pitch has that everyone in this team has that and i utilized it as well um particular attention to adam smith who is the league's highest um consistent running he, he runs he runs like 13k every game um, so you need players who are comfortable doing that. And I think, um, you know, 15s, 16s in those stats will make that possible. He had an absolute blinder of a season as well. Three goals, six assists, three man of the matches, a 7.57 average rating in the league. That's ridiculous. Um, I'm surprised he hasn't got a cap for it, to be honest. Um, but there we are. Yeah. The entire team, I mean, save the goalkeeper, um, who also Aaron Ramsdale, by the way, is you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing with him uh, again. He was uh, very impressive during this. Um, yeah, so as you can see, partnerships have developed very well. Callum Wilson and King, I think they start together. I don't think Lewis Cook and Lerma. I'm not sure about Steve Cook and Ake. Um, but still, these partnerships, obviously very important. Uh, trying to play the same two people in each position every time. And that kind of worked out as well. So let's go and talk into this. Mentality is attacking because that's how I just, that's just how I do things. You know, who dares wins, etc. This is focusing down on the flanks with overlap as well. Um, and to trigger this um, 
wing or to help the wingers get hold of the ball as quickly as possible. I don't like doing long balls or throws to get wingers involved, but I like to distribute to the fullbacks because it's a nice, simple pass up the line to a winger. Um, ordinarily, I do distribute to centre back, particularly since we are technically building out from the back because um, there's more passing options for a centre back than there is for a fullback because a fullback's got to deal with the byline. Um, normally, I'd pick centre backs, but this time, just to try and emphasise to get it down the flanks as soon as possible, we go to the fullbacks. Counter attack and counter press due to the high physical nature of it. The counter press was on mainly because there is, look, there's four guys up here. If this was like um, a flat 4 4 2, these guys would be back here. I probably wouldn't have the counter press on. I probably won't put regroup on either, but counter press makes sense with the amount of bodies up there. And the counter attack makes sense because of the pace and work rates and athleticism of the entire team. Makes perfect sense to me. Um, Attacking width, despite playing wide, I've kept us all fairly close together because I don't want us to run too much because the wider the, the wider the attacking line, the more running they have to do and the more running they'll have to get back. I, I, you feel free to test that out yourself. If you want to go wider, I'd like to hear if anyone does try that. I've kept tempo at um, the middle mark. I haven't moved it up or down at any point. Um, again, if you want to test that out, let me know how that goes. I have work ball into the box to create um, chances in high conversion rate areas, i.e. the penalty box. Um, during the beta early on, there was issues with, I think everyone remembers, one-on-ones weren't going in and every 40 yard went in. Um, and I kind of gambled when I was playing this. I was like, uh, they're going to fix that. So I kept at it like this and um, reaped the rewards after an update. Uh, whip crosses, again, feel free to do whatever you want based on your personnel. Um, defensively, much higher defensive line. You are going to concede m very large majority. Probably half of the goals you concede will be from through balls. Um, deal with it. It's going to happen because of the high line. Um, when I say deal with it, I mean prepare for it. So train your goalkeeper in one-on-ones. Yeah, Make sure your defenders are quick and have worked on their quickness in the last month and things like that. Uh, it's going to happen. It's accepted. But the the goals you will score will greatly outweigh the goals you concede as we look into the analysis here. Yeah, through balls. 13 goals conceded from through balls. Only six from crosses. Um, the rest of them are set pieces. So this is from 50 games. Um, pretty good return rate, I think, considering the color of goals that we've scored compared to the ones we've conceded. And a half, over half of them, I guess, would be from through balls. So prepare for it. Accept it. It's going to happen. Um, work on your players to make sure they have the um, capability of dealing with one-on-ones. Um, his rushing out tendency is not a lot, but his one-on-one -on -one ability is fantastic. Aaron Ramsdale, big fan. Um, any other points to mention? Um, yeah, okay. Um, because, of, yeah, okay, here we go. This is this is the trick to this. The defensive width is narrow, blocking or blocking as m many um, simple through balls through the middle as possible. Now, the problem there is you're going to free up wingers, right? And especially going to get overlapped, right? That's what's going to happen because you're so narrow, there's all this space on the side. But if we go back to the goals conceded, you can see crosses, very few crosses went in. What's going on there? This is what I came up with to stop overlaps. I made sure the attacking midfielder left and attacking midfielder right are marking in the tactic and they're marking the left and right backs um, specifically. Um, this basically means they're going to be close to those uh, players at all times. When we lose the ball, their first thought is to go and mark that player. And because of, and let's look at Bowen, his work rate, his general physicality, he's going to, you know, if stats like that, you're probably going to beat most fullbacks for a physical, uh, sorry, physically, um, and basically become a hindrance to them. And as soon as I did that, all of the overlaps stopped. Um, I'm wondering if there might be something there. If anyone would like to try this with um, specific positions uh, clicked off and let me see how many overlaps you concede or how many crosses that you concede, I'd love to know. But based on this right now, this seems to stop the opponents overlapping. And it was really obvious when I played Manchester City. I was like, they, they're just not overlapping. They were They were down with like half an hour to go. And it was like, they're not really attacking. I'm wondering if this is extremely strong. Um, whether or not it's abusive, I'm not sure. I think it's just com good common sense, good tactical sense to make sure 
um, a weak area of your team is, um, well, you prevent the issue from from even rising. So, yeah, I'd like to know anyone's thoughts on that. If you get um, if you get the chance, by all means, let me know. Um, but yeah, we're gonna score goals with this. Um, it's a fifteen nil against Gombak United. Um, that was funny, and then I lost against Ken, and then yeah, win. Look at that win streak. October to January. Oh yeah, look at that. This is where I went on holiday, and then we started to lose. But that's going to be expected. Um, yeah, we're going to score lots of goals. You're going to perform. You're going to overperform. Whether or not you win the league or not, I'm not too sure. I can't give you a full guide on how to do that because if everyone knows there's, there's so many variables. But here we are, champions of England as Bournemouth, probably a few thousand to one odds, um, probably worth a tenner at the start of the year. Uh, oh yeah, I did. was going to mention disciplinary issues. The introduction of the uh, code of conduct into FM20 has been really, really strong um, in my opinion. The reason is because of this sort of like all or nothing defensive uh, high line, winner take all type thing. There are going to be yellow cards, as you can see. Jefferson Lerma and Lloyd Kelly are leading the league on yellow cards. Now, two things are really good for this code of conduct. Number one, um, repeat offenders get punished harshly because I've given like um, it wasn't the default recommendation. I was much stricter on multiple booking suspensions and straight red cards than normally. I think it was like. Uh, one week fine for the first red card and then everything else after that was two. And then after initial start of the season, red cards stopped, pretty much stopped dead. There was no red cards. It was all yellow card suspensions, which is actually a blessing because of the, the physicality of it. Our players get tired and the suspension gives an excuse to rest players. Um, rather than, you know, getting them out. They won't be angry if they're constantly suspended and you don't pick them. They get a chance to rest. So that kind of worked hand in hand um, with the, the code of conduct. Make sure it's strict with this because there are going to be bookings. It is going to happen. Um, but yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything. Uh, oh no, set pieces. I will talk about this one set piece. Um, I have a corner. I have two corners. I have a near post and a short corner, and it's, it's very sneaky. Right, you'll notice that on the near post corner, I still have uh, a free guy. This is Jared Bowen currently. Um, what happens is when the highlight starts, the AI will spot that Jared Bowen is completely unmarked, and he'll start to trot over to them and come away from the near post, which means if it's actually a near post delivery, uh, good old Steve Cook here is got one less body to deal with and can create all sorts of chaos with that. So the AI goes, oh, hang on, that guy's completely unmarked. I'll send the nearest person to him to go mark him. Blip, 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 blip. Bang. You know, he scored more than a couple of goals, Steve Cook. I'm not exactly sure how many, but he scored, he scored five. There you go. Five just on him. Um, no doubt all of them were this. Um, obviously, we we'll needed a short corner to call the bluff of the AI as well, because sometimes it will be, um, you know, distribution to here, and then it'll be a shot. And obviously, they're going to try and stop that. So, yeah, this was a mix, um, which I am very proud of, <laughs> honestly. Um, it's definitely worth looking at the set pieces um, this year as well. But, you know, that by the by. I think I've covered pretty much everything in a video. I didn't want to go on too long. I think I've already gone on long enough. So I'll tell you what, we'll end the video there. There will be a written guide with all sorts of things that I observed. Um, well, I originally like <laughs> scrolled them down on the piece of paper. I'll type it up and uh, make it available to you uh, via the Patreon page, the Steam Workshop, and Passion4FM website. If you want a direct download, that is the place to go. Incidentally, you will find a pack uh, of custom views. Some of them will have mine in, including my general view here, which I'm a huge fan of. But I think the best one that I've done is the one-stop training where everything you need to see how a player is performing or improving or not is um, available on one screen rather than you having to go into the training and then go into individual and then see there's no development there. There's no development bar. Um, so I wanted this basically, so the progress bar. There you go. So as you can see, um, training level, uh, you can see Simon Francis and Charlie Daniels have down tools. Um, they're basically a couple of months before the end of the season, they both wanted new challenges. Um, 
and then they won the league and the league cup. So the ungrateful is what I'd say there. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the first system. Thank you very much for watching. Again, if you want like videos like this, or if you uh, want to get involved in the testing and the offline testing and the private Patreon testing things of tactics, by all means, become a patron. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you next time. Um, take care.